In this lesson, we'll take a look at what is called geometric probability. Now, to begin this, we're going to take a quick reminder of what probability is to begin with. So, when we're looking at probability, we typically notate it as P of X, X being the events that we want to have happen. The way we calculate geometric probability is that we take a ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. Another way of looking at this is how many ways can I have success compared to how many ways can anything happen at all. So when we're looking at geometric probability, a lot of times this comes into area or the amount of space that is uh, taken up by each item. So let's take a look at items with this number line that is shown. Let's say we're going to place a point, we're going to call it K, at some location on this number line. So what we want to know is what's the probability that K lies on the interval of QR? And the way we would calculate this is to find the length of QR, which we do through subtraction, so we'd have 8 minus 5, divided by the entire length of the line segment, length of ST, which would be 14 minus 2. So 8 minus 5 gives us 3, 14 minus 2 gives us 12, and then we simplify our fraction, so 3 twelfths is 1 fourth. We have a 1 in 4 chance, or 25% chance, that K is going to be placed on this interval between Q and R. Now let's try another one. What is the probability that some randomly placed point H on the line segment ST lies on the interval of SR? So again, what's the length of SR? That's going to be 8 minus 2 divided by the entire length of the uh, line segment, 14 minus 2. 8 minus 2 is 6, 14 minus 2 is 12, so we have 1 half, or a 50% probability of this event occurring. So being able to calculate when we're looking at one dimension is just what's the length of what we're looking at, or looking for, compared to the entire length of what we're looking at. Now, how does this begin to translate over when we start looking at things in two dimensions? Let's take a look at that. When we're looking at two dimensions, what we're looking at is the amount of area of having a success, hitting the location we want, compared to the total area possible. For instance, in the first figure shown, we have a square with a circle inscribed inside of it. And we want to know what the probability that an object thrown or dropped at random to this shape would land in the shaded area. So the way we get the shaded area, or the way we calculate this probability, is that the probability of the shaded is the shaded area divided by the total area. Now for our shaded area, the way we're going to calculate this is square minus circle gives us the shade and the total area is going to be the area of the square. So the way we calculate the area of a square is side length squared. So we have 6 squared and for a circle is pi times the radius squared not equals there but minus pi times radius squared with radius of 3, half the length of the side of the square. So we have pi times 3 squared divided by total area of the square is 6 units squared. 6 squared is 36. Pi times 3 squared, that's 9 times pi, which comes out to be 9 pi is approximately 28 and 27 hundredths divided by the area of the square which is 36 
Now subtracting that numerator will give us 7.73 divided by 36 and then that comes out to be approximately 21% or 0.21. So calculate the total area, calculate the area of the shaded and divide the shaded area by the total. Let's take a look at a second one here. We have the prob what's the probability of landing inside of the shaded region of this triangle inside of the square. And hopefully you have some idea on this, but we'll work through it and then talk about it in a minute. So probability of shaded area again is in this case going to be uh, shaded area divided by the uh, square again. Now our shaded area is square minus triangle over the total area of the square. Our shaded area, our, sorry, our square is going to be 5 squared minus 1 half of base, area, base length of 5, height of 5 as well. Total area of the square is 5 squared. So we have 25 minus 12 and a half over 25. 25 minus 12 and a half is 12 and a half. Divided by 25 gives us a total area of 1 half. Now, the reason I said hopefully you have some idea of what's going to happen here and be able to talk about it is the way we calculate the area of a uh, triangle is that's one half of the base times height. So any triangle inside of any parallelogram, as long as it is an inscribed uh, figure where it just touches the edges, the inner figure just touches the edges of the outer, is going to be one half of that total shape. So we should always come out there with a the probability of one half. Now how can we apply this out into other objects? Here is a bullseye pictured. Somebody's been doing some arrow shooting work at it. Now, let's say that the inner region here, from where the arrow is touched out to the edge, is 2 inches. And each colored section has a width of the same 2 inches. What would be the probability of hitting the red area. And the way we're going to calculate this is we're going to find the area of the red and divide that by the total area possible. Now calculating the area of the red is going to be a little bit interesting because what we have to do is find the area of the circle for the outer edge and subtract the area of the inner circle. So what is the radius of that outer circle? Well, if we're looking at the red one, we have a two inch radius here and another two inches here. So we have two plus two, a total radius of four inches. So we have pi times four squared and we're going to subtract the inner circle, which will be pi times 2 squared. All that is divided by the total area possible in the bullseye. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 inches total. So we have pi times 10 squared. Now calculating this out, 4 squared is 16, so I have 16 pi minus pi times 2 squared would be 4 pi divided by 100 pi. 16 pi minus 4 pi is 12 pi divided by 100 pi. Our pi's will simplify away. So what we're left with is 12 one hundredths 
both these items can be divided by 4, so we end up with 3 25ths, or 12%. 12% of the overall area of this bullseye, or of this target, is the red section. Now each section out will take up a larger percent of the area, the total area, so it's easier to hit the larger sections even though it looks like they're more spread out. So geometric probability, like any probability, is the probability of getting the success or the figure that you want divided by all possible ways of doing anything with that activity. So make sure you have these concepts, formulas down and are ready to use them as we practice some geometric probabilities.